greatest friend. He knows all about you, and his love for you cannot end. He made you for a purpose, is interested in you. So give him all jerks and let his love shine through. through Christ. So let's stand to our feet. Let's sing a song where we just welcome the Lord. We welcome the Lord wherever you are, wherever you're watching this, whether it's out in the open, whether it's in a house or you're listening to it on a, in a car or in an office. We just say, Lord, we just welcome you here. We welcome you with praise. We want your spirit to come to do a work that only you can do. So let's sing. Let our praise be your welcome, let our songs be a sign, we are here for you, yes we are here for you, let your breath Lord, let your breath
pray for a supernatural fire, the fire that comes from heaven, the fire that burns the offering of our worship, the fire, the fire that receives our praise today. So we welcome you here. We say. that again. We welcome you with praise. Let's open up our hands. If you can to the Lord, just open them up. Even lift them up in the air as a sign that God, we just welcome you here. A sign with our bodies where we say, God, we welcome you into our hearts. And we see. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Again, we welcome you with praise today. We welcome you with praise, everyone. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Because we welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place today. Yes. With our hands. saying what our hearts believe. We welcome you with praise. And if faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectation. We're waiting here for you. Lift our hands, waiting here for you, with our hands lifted. 
me waiting here for you With our hands lifted high In praise And it's you that we adore So we're singing hallelujah Lifted high in praise Because it's you, Lord, we adore Singing hallelujah We're waiting here for you to him today sing a song of praise receiving your song and your spoken word thank you Lord for the supernatural deliverance through Jesus Christ our Lord restore us redeem us deliver us in Jesus name amen supernatural deliverance through Christ. I want to remind you from God's Word that it says, all we want and all we need is found in Him. It's found in Jesus Christ. So we go to Him this morning. We seek after Him in song and in the Word through Pastor Kamui. So let's lift up our voices together. We're reaching out to welcome
give us a great glimpse of a never-changing God. All we want is you. still waters he makes me lie down in green pastures surely his goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and we will dwell in the house of the Lord together Lord we receive that invitation we receive your hospitality we seek your goodness and mercy come on Sing it again. 
my life All my life you have been faithful That's right, come on, sing that All my life you have been so, so good, God With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Praise the Lord. Your miracles are starting already. You will not be disappointed. God's power, Christ's name, will come in your life and great will be your possession tonight in Jesus name Amen. Father we thank you we believe you no word of yours will fall to the ground Amen. and for everyone here everyone there everyone everywhere there is a miracle with their names attached to it. And tonight will be the night of your performance and demonstration in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're looking at Matthew chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, Thy kingdom come. The kingdom of power. The kingdom of glory. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of grace. The kingdom of all possibilities in your life. He moves us out of the earthly kingdom. He gets us into the eternal kingdom and he establishes us in Emmanuel's kingdom. And then thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In your life tonight, the will of God. In your family tonight, the will of God. And any negative will will not be done in your life. His will is for your joy, for your happiness, for your protection, for your healing, for your deliverance. And then eventually, after he has blessed you on earth, he will take you to heaven. He's already preparing a place for you, a mansion with your name on the top of that mansion in heaven. And the will of God is that as you enjoy him here on earth, you'll enjoy him in heaven. I will be there. You will be there. We shall be there. I'll see you there. Tonight, we're talking about the wonder of God's will and goodness. The wonder of God's will and goodness. I need to show you something. Look at this. It's Psalm 145, reading from verse 9. Psalm 145, verse 9. The Lord is good to all. To how many? The Lord is good to all. I said to how many? All of us here, you'll find tonight the Lord is good unto you. And those online, wherever you are, I come to you to inform you and to tell you the Lord will be good to you tonight. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works 
everyone created by God. The tender mercy of the Lord over everyone. And you are included. That's why the mercy of God will bring forgiveness to you. And freedom to you. A miracle to you. You as a man. You as a woman. You as a boy. You as a girl. Praise the Lord. The goodness of the Lord is coming your way. Look at verse 19. In verse 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Look at verse 20 there. In verse 20 it says, The Lord preserveth all them that love him. That's why you are here. You love him. You love the mention of his name. And you love to be in his presence. And the Lord tells us, He preserveth all them that love him. But all the wicked it will destroy I will not be wicked. I will not be wicked. The mercy of God will come upon your life. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the discovery of God's will in our salvation. The discovery of God's will for our salvation. Number two, the declaration of God's will in our healing. Number three, the demonstration of God's will in our sanctification and satisfaction. Number one, look at number one there, is the discovery of God's will in our salvation. You know, there are people, they have not discovered God's will. And so they say, I don't know whether I will be saved or I will not be saved. They have not discovered God's will for their salvation. They say, I don't know whether I am for destruction or for salvation. They have not discovered the mind of God, the will of God in their salvation. They say, I don't know whether I am the num I'm part of the number appointed for salvation or appointed for the other side. I came to tell you openly, faithfully, courageously, convincingly, you are much for salvation. Look at this in 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 3. And we're talking about the will of God. Look at this now. It says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Look at verse 4. It says, who will have all men to be saved. That finalizes it. Who will have all men, everyone, all his creatures. Jesus came not for a fraction of the world. Jesus came not for the minority in the world. Jesus came not for a part of the world. He came for everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, that's you there, that's you there. Whosoever believes in him will not perish. You will not perish. Let me see your face there. I said you will not perish. My boy there, my girl there, you will not perish. My brother there, my sister there, you will not perish. I wish I could come to you there and tap you and say, I'm talking about you. That you, where are you? That you will not perish. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life why who will have all men to be saved if you were thinking before i'm not part of them i'm not there i'm not to get this i'm not going to get that 
change your mind salvation is available for you and it's very simple it's just like you give yourself to the lord you surrender yourself to the lord you said here am i i learned i just knew you died for me and because you died for me i will live forever who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth that's it that's it and to come to the knowledge of the truth look at second peter there chapter three we're looking at verse nine in second peter chapter three verse nine look at this it says the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness the people who do not know god they compare god with themselves as they are slack in fulfilling their word so they think god is like them and god is slack they compare god with their neighbors as their neighbors are slack in fulfilling their word they think god is like their neighbor but god is higher than everyone is greater than any everyone he is a perfect god and it says the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men come slackness but is long suffering towards what is patient towards what now why hasn't god killed you when you told a lie there are people that told a lie and it just died why hasn't God killed you when you did some naughty, terrible, evil thing? And you say, if there is God there, okay, I've done that now. Let God strike me and make me die. Ah, God is not like that. You should know that God is patient. God is long-suffering. He is willing to overlook everything you have done. He said, I could have killed you. And I could have justified that when you did this, when you did this, when you did that. But he said, no, I didn't mark you for destruction. I marked you for salvation. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord that no matter what you have done if god wanted to kill you long long ago he could have killed you but he said no i can't kill this man i love him i won't kill this woman i love her and i'm preparing a place for her and i don't want the mansion i'm preparing for her in heaven to be vacant your place in heaven will not be vacant because he is not suffering towards what not willing that anyone shall perish but that all shall come to repentance all shall come to repentance in the mind of god in the plan of god in the program of god he wants all 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 to come to repentance that's why you are here tonight you're welcome I said you're welcome to repentance, to reconciliation, to redemption, and to the salvation of God to you, for you. Tonight, you discover God's will in your salvation. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 9, how simple it is that if thou that what thou is if you shall confess with your mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god raised him from the dead thou thou who is the thou you will be saved amen Look at verse 10, in verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see what the Lord is saying, your own mouth. 
if you confess Jesus my Lord Jesus my Savior Jesus my Redeemer he died for me I accept his sacrifice I accept the offer of his salvation and I say today as I give myself to the Lord I am saved what you confess with your mouth no angel no demon no Satan can reverse that if you say I believe I repent I call Jesus my Savior heaven will register your name that you are saved what are you tonight heaven will register your name that who is saved who is saved if you are saved tonight look at verse 13 there in verse 13 for whosoever 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 no discrimination whosoever no partiality whosoever there is no iron door that will shield you out whosoever there is no wall of demarcation that will take you away from that for whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved final you tonight i said you tonight you know, if you have been, you know, going to meetings, hearing Bible, hearing preachers, and yet you are not sure, am I saved? Am I not saved? Am I reconciled to God? Am I not reconciled to God? Tonight, assurance has come that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You finalize the deal tonight. You are saved in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two, I'm looking at the declaration of God's will for our healing. The declaration of God's will for our healing. I need to remind you that the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, it says, the kingdom come. And it says, Thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. What does that mean? As heaven. Those who come into the eternal kingdom of Christ and to Emmanuel's kingdom, the will of God, the will of God will be done in your life. I was waiting for a global choir. Amen. The will of God will be done in your life. On earth, in heaven, there's no cancer in heaven. There will be no cancer in your life. There is no blindness in heaven, and there will be no blindness in your body there. There is no weakness or debilitating sickness I sat down I could not stand up that's not in heaven I walk I'm tired and weary that is not in heaven there's something biting me and biting my lungs that one is not in heaven there's nothing knocking something knocking my brain I see my brain will scatter all that is not in heaven that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven the will of god for you here on earth is that you will be healed tonight you will be well tonight and any infirmity and any sickness and any deficiency and any impotence that is not in heaven will not be upon your life today that will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven angels tell me Gabriel you came and you saw Mary you came and you saw Zechariah 
tell me what happens in heaven. Have you ever been sick as an angel? Never. How about the other angels in heaven? Have they been sick, lying down, and they couldn't do anything? And then they say they don't know the source of the sickness, and there's no treatment. Gabriel, tell me what happens over there. It says, for all the angels in heaven, there's no sickness. Do you mean that you're always well? He says, yes. And Jesus said, that will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. That's why I came to tell you today that the sickness in your body, as you now connect with Christ, that sickness will be taken away. Anything the devil has been using to knock your head, knock your body, knock your mind, you're free tonight. Look at this, look at this. There was a man that didn't know. Is it God's will for me to be well? Is it God's will for me to be healed? And so, Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Look at verse 2. And behold, there came a leper. I need to tell you. The lepers in Israel, even in many communities now, they were not allowed to come to the synagogue. They were not allowed to mix with other people. They were not allowed to pray with other people. They were not allowed to hear anything. So the man was ignorant because he wasn't allowed to come to the synagogue to come to the temple to hear anything about the word and the will of God. And so in his ignorance, he said, if thou wilt, because I'm not sure. He wasn't sure because it was a leper that was never allowed to mix with the people. That's why he said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean if you want to if you desire if it is your will but now you cannot claim ignorance why you have a bible why because you already know he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You cannot claim ignorance because you know he has said now this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they cast out devils and if they lay their hands on the seed they shall recover. You cannot claim any ignorance now like this leper because he gave them power and he gave them authority to cast out devils and to heal the seed and to tell the people the kingdom of God is coming come unto you now he was ignorant thank god i am not ignorant see it for yourself you know the will of god the will of god is your healing where are you praise god as you raise up that hand heaven has seen that hand the will of god is that tonight tonight you are healed and now, when he said, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. What did Jesus say? Look at verse 3. And Jesus put forth a sign and touched him, saying, I will. I will. I will. He never said, I will not to anyone. Never. The blind came, I will. The lame were brought, I will. The deaf and dumb came, I will. The demonized came, and the answer is always the same. I will. That will has not changed. Heaven, sky, and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. 
The will of God is immediate. Jesus does not say, ah, you don't have enough money, go and come back. You don't have enough substance, go and come back. We have been looking at the register and they didn't mark your name the other time when everybody was in church or not in church. Go and come back. There is no go and come back. Your healing, your miracle tonight is immediate. No going and then coming back. My miracle. My miracle is immediate tonight. He will do it for you. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. That is the will of God for everyone. Look at verse 16 there. In that chapter 8, verse 16. And when the evening was come, now, is where we are now. Is this morning or afternoon or evening? Tell me. Tell me. Is the evening of the will of God. The evening and it's the time for your healing. The weather is cool and then the cool virtue of the Lord will flow into your body right there tonight. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick and healed all that was sick tell me how many healed tell me out aloud you know it's like you know all of them are they lined up the first one came so okay you are healed it was healed the next one and then that one tried to, you know, praise him and mention his titles. Like, okay, you're here. And then the third one just came and he wasn't dressing like the other people. He didn't look neat like the other people. And he was uh, coming from, you know, wherever in the world. And Jesus said, ah, how are you like this? Why are you like this? Person, did anything happen like that? Did he reject anyone? No. Healed all that was sick. My night has come. Your time has come. You know, these crusades we've been having, we at a crusade just some time ago. The man will tell you himself, he had cancer. Cancer internally. And then as he came, he streamed the GCK online. And after the prayer, he was healed completely. He was healed perfectly. He was healed permanently. And now he's still enjoying the effect of the healing. All pains gone, cancer gone, like it will happen to you tonight. I said, like it will happen to you tonight. Let the man come up and talk to you tonight and say, just like you are now. That's where I was and I got it. As you listen to his testimony, you will get it. Online friend, you will get it. Let him come. Let him talk to us now. My name is Oniola Niwaju. Last year, I was diagnosed of pedicle, massive uh, pedicle effusion, which means there are a lot of fluid in my heart. I did some surgery, and after the surgery, uh, histology, then I did another surgery, and a mass was removed from my chest. And it went for test, and it came out that I have primary carcinoma, which is a form of cancer. After the first chemo, which was a little bit terrible, I, I collapsed. I spent about a week in the hospital. Then after that week, I joined Global Crusade. That was in 
September, I joined them online. Usually in the evening, I participate in their prayer. And what a particular day, what a particular day, believing in God, I feel some sensation. But I, then I believe that I've been healed. I strongly believe that I've been healed. This year, January, I did another test. To the glory of God, that there's no form of what, no form of cancer in my chest because actually it has spread from my chest to my heart to my lung and everything was cleared. And this is a miracle. There's no, there's no other word to describe it. It's a miracle and it's a miracle that needs to be shared and needs to be so that everyone should know that word, that what God cannot do does not exist. Yes, I need to thank God for the life of Pastor Kumuyi for giving us this opportunity of joining online. Online miracle, online service is, a, is an avenue for people like us that are maybe in-house, incapacitated, to participate in the glory and the wonderful work of God. Thank you, and I give glory and return honor and adoration to the Almighty God, to my Christ, my Savior, and my personal Savior. Praise the Lord! Did it for the man online and you on land here. Alpha location is coming your way. You know, as the crusade continued, all far away in Canada, before you get to Canada, from here, from the Alpha location, you get in the plane, you stop, you're in transit. Then you move all the way to Canada. And this man was blind. And there was connection. Look at that. Because there is no discrimination with the Lord. Tonight is your night. Connection. I said connection. Don't let's waste time. Listen to the man all the way from Canada, blind, and the Lord opened their eyes. He was blind. With Kumui, changed his story. This man is Joe Cosman, and uh, he couldn't see very well. He, three, he was three quarters blind. And to feel and to know where he's living, he'd have to feel around him, he'd stumble, fall into things, and sometimes he would hurt himself. And I know because uh, we, the um, power of God had touched him tonight, and he's been healed. Now he can go places and do things. He has a walking stick, but he, now he doesn't have to use his walking stick because our Lord God, Dr. Jesus, has healed him tonight. And now, is happy all the way. Look at Mama Ruth right now. Exercise your faith. Oh, right there. You can see her. Come on. Come on. Go meet her. Go meet her. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give her a couple? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mama, can you count fingers for me? Can you count fingers? Just give can me. Can I count fingers? Yeah, just. Your, how many fingers can you see? I see. One, two, three, four, five. Oh! Oh! Amen! I was just telling you that in the evening, they brought to Christ many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed how many? And healed how many? All that were sick. And then in verse 17, it says that it might be fulfilled, which was so spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Amen. Amen. Point number three now is the demonstration of God's will for our satisfaction and our sanctification. Look at first Thessalonians chapter 4 
And I'm reading from verse 3. For this is the will of God. Salvation. This is the will of God. Joy. This is the will of God. Healing. This is the will of God. Deliverance. This is the will of God. Satisfaction. This is the will of God. Sanctification. This is the will of God. All good things tonight. Will of God in your life. That he should abstain from fornication. The Lord will do it tonight. The Lord himself has paid the whole price. And everything that needs to be done has been done for the will of God to be fulfilled in your life. Where are you? I said, where are you? It will be done tonight. Salvation, give me a good amen. amen. Healing, give me a good amen. amen. Satisfaction in your life, give me a good amen. amen. And in a work of grace, your sanctification, a good amen. amen. And the Lord is ready for you now. Say, the Lord is ready for me now. Say, the Lord is ready for me now. It will forgive your sin. It will change your life. It will transform you completely. And that blessing and that benefit you need in your life, tonight is your night in Jesus' name. It's bowed, eyes closed. Once you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, once you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your deliverer and redeemer. That he will take away every evil sin and your sin you have committed. He will forgive you. It will be done instantaneously. As bad as closed, you want to surrender your life to Christ right now. And you want to say, yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. I know your will is for me to be saved. And I want that will to be done right now. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Amen. God bless you there. God bless you there. Wherever you are, to the right, to the left, in front, at the back, or outside this place, raise up that hand. Salvation has come. Your deliverance has come. Your forgiveness has come. You are online. And you know the will of God for you is to be saved. Raise up that hand. Have that salvation now. Anywhere you are, if you are raising up your hand, just stand up wherever you are. Stand up wherever you are. It's coming. Immediately, he'll say, I will. And it will save you. It will forgive you. I will. He will set you free. And then he will write your name in the book of life in heaven. Raise up that hand. Stand up. I'm praying with you now. Father, according to your promise, according to your desire, according to your plan, that you don't want anyone to be lost. You want everyone saved. I bring all these before you. All these on lunch here and all those online. I pray your salvation will come to them now in Jesus' name. Forgiveness for every one of them. Freedom for every one of them. Redemption, reconciliation with God for every one of them in Jesus' name. Confirm their names reaching in the book of life in heaven. Confirm of the joy of salvation and a changed, transformed life. Thank you, Lord, because I know it's done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Another global choir. Amen. Brothers and sisters, keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And he'll give you the you know thing to feel. Now you are in the kingdom. 
affiliate faithfully and truthfully. Welcome to the salvation of the Lord. We call on our pastor overseer to lead us now in this time of counseling. No sickness on your body. Anywhere you are now, here, Alpha location, there, online, healing is coming to you. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand upon yourself. And when you hear that final amen, so let it be, so it is, it will happen. One hand up, the other hand, or you have the challenge. Father, in Jesus' name. What a glorious opportunity to know that our healing is your will. And your will will never be contradicted. When you say yes, nobody can say no. Therefore, Lord, I come for everyone here, everyone over the radio, everyone over the television, everyone online. Lord, I pray that healing, that deliverance, which is your will, do it now for everyone in Jesus' name. That tumor, the fibroid, and that swelling, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Cancer, dry up in Jesus' name. Ulcer, be healed in Jesus' name. Insanity, madness, I command that demon of madness, Come out in Jesus' name. The pile, you are healed in Jesus' name. Vomiting blood, stealing blood, and urinating blood, you are healed in Jesus' name. Pain in your bone, pain in your joints, arthritis. Be healed in Jesus' name. Every form of sickness in your body, from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, the hand of the Lord touch you right now. Here, to my right, to my left, in front of me there, far at the back, Receive your healing in Jesus' name. My online audience, I talk to you directly. And I send forth the power of God unto you directly. Anywhere you are, any congregation, any community, any home, anywhere, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, let there be demonstration everywhere, manifestation everywhere, definite healing everywhere, miracle everywhere. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name I pray. It has happened. You have got it. Do what you are not able to do before. Your miracle is already there with you. 